Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? It is really early on Monday morning. It is currently, let me see what time it is. It's currently 2.20 a.m. on Monday morning. And we got home earlier today from San Diego. We got into Indianapolis about 3.30. Today, um, we spent the, the last week in San Diego for my brother-in-law and um, his new wife, Jessie's wedding, and we had such a fantastic time hanging out with the family and stuff. But yesterday, I got really, really sick. Um, they had like an after wedding beach party and everybody went to the beach and stuff like that and I just I felt like crap I was like I don't know what's going on like my throat is hurting I just feel worn down and so I actually left the beach about halfway through the day I told my husband I said I've got to go back to the house and sleep for a little bit because they were all coming back there that night and then we were leaving um, this morning from San Diego at like four o'clock in the morning. And so he was like, okay, babe, just go back to the house, you know, whatever. And so um, I uh, went back to the house and just completely crashed for like four hours and got up and felt even worse <laughs> than I had before. It was crazy. I don't get sick very often. I, I really don't. And when I do, it just completely takes me out. And so um, got up and then hung out with the family and nobody else in the family was sick. I was like the only one that felt this way. And, um, which is interesting because I'm the only one that doesn't drink and I wasn't staying up as late as everybody else and stuff like that. And I'm the only one that got sick. So, um, stayed up with everybody and was talking to all the family and everything like that. And then we got up early this morning and um, we went to the airport with my other brother-in-law and sister-in-law and their kids and then we all flew back to Indianapolis and it was just a, a fantastic trip but the whole ride back I just was like oh my god I feel like crap and um, so I, I have just not felt great all day long and we actually got into Indianapolis we got home and I unpacked all my stuff it's always like the first thing I do is unpack all of my stuff and got it all put away and um, I kind of decided on the, like, when we landed, I was like, sh should I film a vlog today? Should I film a drama video when we get back? We're getting back to the house early, and I just thought, I feel like crap now. Just, like, take another day off. Don't film anything. Just relax. And so, um, I, like, was talking to my friend, my best friend, Tanya Jean, on the phone, and she's like, you need to load up on vitamin C and all this kind of stuff. So, I loaded up on vitamin C and emergency and the hydration packages and zinc and vitamin D. And as soon as I say this, I know I'm gonna get a bunch of recommendations in the comment section. But anyway, I lay down for like four hours and I got up and I started feeling a little bit better. And um, so I said to Alex, I said, do you think I should take a COVID test? And he was like, yeah, I mean, maybe. So I took a COVID test, it was negative. Um, and I'm now I'm it's been a couple hours. We were watching the Real Housewives. We got caught up on the Real Housewives of Orange County, um, first part of the reunion, and then we watched two episodes of Real Housewives in New York, and then we watched Watch What Happens Live. And then he went to bed and I just watched the newest episode from tonight of Big Brother. And I'm um, catching up on all my shows. I've been keeping up with the Halloween movies because on my uh, channel, Peter Does Stuff, we are watching all 13 of the Halloween movies this month, three a week. So I've been keeping up on that. I've been keeping up on all my reality shows. I don't, know, I don't know how I do it. People are like, you film four to six, seven videos a day. You read books. You listen to audiobooks. You hang out with your husband and your dog. You go to meetings with your friends. I, I don't know how I do that. I just, you know, and to me, um, I just feel like I have just such a blessed life. And I just try to fill, you know, fill it with as much as possible. And I'm just so grateful. And I think one of those is, one of the reasons why is because this is what I get to, what I get to get up and do every single day is make videos. And I just, I cherish it so much. Um, and I love it so much. And so I want to talk about this a little bit today. I actually want to talk about a video that I, well, something that I said in a video um, sometime last week about an interaction that I had with Shane Dawson and Trisha Paytas and Amelia Fart. And because um, somebody sent me a Reddit thread that was talking about this. So I want to kind of bring it up and explain why I brought it up originally and things like that. Um, but I'm starting to feel better. So I was sitting here and I was watching Big Brother. I was getting ready to go in and, and watch Love After Lockup. And I thought, no, I'm sitting out here. I'm drinking some of this, uh, this throat easy tea, which is kind of nasty. And so I thought, why don't you just 
film this video tonight because one of the comments in there said that they used to love my videos, but that I'm so aggressive and, and nasty and screaming at, <laughs> at the camera and that they had to unsubscribe to me because um, they don't watch YouTube for screaming and stuff like that. Hey, I get it. I get it, you know? And um, I've said this enough in my videos and... Um, I feel like these late night conversations are a little less fan flipping, you know, um, a little less obviously drama phone and things like that. And so I, I feel like I'm just talking to you as I would talk to a friend. If you feel the need to unsubscribe to me because you feel that my tone is a little bit different in videos and whatnot, I, listen, I totally understand that. I don't take any offense to that whatsoever. Um, I, I really don't. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want like a mass unfollowing. Like I, I really appreciate those people that follow me. Um, but I also am very fully aware and um, I'm going to talk about my age in a, in a second, but I'm also fully aware that um, m this need for me, you know, I refer to it as my standing up for myself era, <clears throat> which is a little bit of what we're going to talk about today because I'm, I'm done playing games. And so when people are going to accuse me of things, I'm just going to come with the proof. Because um, I'm just tired of playing games. In all honesty, I've been accused of being li a liar for the seven years that I've been on YouTube. And I'm just going to start coming out with the facts. Because it's just bullshit at this point. You know, there's no reason for me to continue to hide behind and be like, well, don't read text messages. Don't read DMs. Don't prove yourself wrong. Fuck that. If I have proof to the contrary, I'm just going to come out and read it, you know? So, um... So anyway, I understand this need for myself to stand up for myself and this need to um, address situations that come my way or to tell the truth as I see it about the people that I've interacted with behind the scenes for years and years and years um, and that I get very passionate about it. I can understand how that probably translates to some people as aggressive or um, which I think, think is, um, I, I think that can be a dangerous word to you sometimes, obviously. Um, but I think that sometimes passion is misinterpreted. Um, I also think that passion can be about excitement or it can be about passion of feeling like you need to be vindicated or you need to tell the truth about something or you're just excited and talking about a TV show or something like that. I think sometimes passion is misinterpreted as anger, you know? Um, for years and years and years, um, my best friend who, I mean, she shared this in videos and she, she doesn't care if I share it, but you know, she and I are both sober and she'll say, you know, sometimes my passion as a sober person is misinterpreted and she, she'll say, you know, like as a, as a man, if a man is passionate about something, well, they're just like, they're, they're strong minded and whatever. But when a woman is passionate about something, she's a bitch. So if I'm passionate about recovery and I take this very, very seriously, then she's being a bitch is, is what, you know, she's been accused of through the years. And she's like, I don't really care if I'm a bitch or I'm seen as a bitch because of my, um, my passion um, and my overwhelming compassion and love for people in recovery. I also don't care at this point if my passion for the truth and my passion for my opinion and my passion for standing up for myself is misinterpreted as me being a nasty human being. Like, if, if that's how you're going to see it, that's how you're going to see it. Um, my need to stand up for myself and not um, allow myself to any longer be a doormat when I have allowed people to walk over me for years and years and years has gone on too long. And my need to stand up for myself is more important than your level of comfort in watching my videos. So as much as it makes me sad that there are people out there that no longer feel um, as if they are able to watch my videos because they're like, oh, Peter's screaming, Peter's cussing, Peter's this, whatever. I totally understand it. It makes me sad that you feel like you have to leave. Um, but it is more important to me <clears throat> that A, I stand up for myself and that I am as close to my most genuine, authentic self as I possibly can, number one. And number two is that maybe to somebody out there, and I've gotten several comments from people, several DMs, several emails that people are like, thank you so much, Peter, for standing up for yourself because I haven't for so long in my life. Um, and that this is like witnessing you doing this is really <clears throat> empowering me to feel like I can do it. It's not just for me that I'm doing it. It's for that one person out there that has never felt like they could stand up for themselves and to say, see, if I can do it, you can do it too. Um, you know, I, I can go all the way back to kindergarten of being bullied 
all the way through junior high, high school, all the way into sobriety, workplaces, romantic relationships, family situations. I have been a doormat my entire life and never stood up for myself. And those days are fucking over. I'm done with it. Um, today in my life, and I, and I think that it took me doing some very, very deep 12-step work and inventory. I think it also took me getting really, really into the trenches in therapy. And it also took me to finally, for the first time in my life, be surrounded by a very small group, but a very loyal, good group of people that have my back at any expense. And I feel probably the safest that I've ever felt in my entire life. And I can say this with all certainty. I would rather have one person by my side that I feel safe next to and that is loyal and has my back and I have theirs than be surrounded by a hundred people. And for much of my life, I felt that it was more important for me to be liked and accepted by the masses and you know when I was in my early 20s and when I was using and things like that it was important for me to be like the life of the party and have people like me and things like that I don't care about that anymore I really don't it's been a long road in all honesty you know um one of the things that the people that don't like me um are always quick to throw up is oh he's 50 years old well they usually age me up to about 60 right you know um <laughs> but they'll say you know like oh like he's 50 years old you know he should be over the drama or why is a 50 year old consumed with this or why is a 50 year old whatever you know what i've always been a slow learner i have and and if you watch any of my other channels it's not something that i like lie about you know i'm like i i've always been a slow learner to things and i'm somebody that um I think to my detriment has, to my detriment and also to my strength, I think, has always given people 9th, 12th, 14th, 16th chances because I want to forever believe in people, which is why I hang on and I linger on for so long. I think part of this standing up for myself era is that um, I was giving the inappropriate people chances to redeem themselves. People that, number one, I didn't really care about that much anyway because they were just influencers, which I think is such a phony ass word. But number two, because they don't really matter to me in the grand scheme of things, I should really be caring more about, you know, my husband, my best friend, my mother-in-law, my cousin, my dad, my stepmother, things like that, my sponsor. I should really care about what they think other than what some fancy ass influencer that lives in California that is only using me to manipulate a story behind the scenes thinks. Um, and in all honesty, when I started on YouTube and I was very taken and I would say things like, oh, like if I met this person, I'd faint a million faints. I was very enthralled with that whole thing. I think that was actually kind of probably the incarnation of the whole drama community was that, back then, was that the majority of us, and I can't speak for them, but I witnessed it. So if I'm wrong, I apologize to my colleagues, my colleagues at that time, um, but that was kind of what I witnessed was that we were just people that loved YouTube. And we started talking about these people and then these people kind of shined us on and gave us attention. And what we didn't realize at the time was that we were being manipulated behind the scenes because they would say things to us very nicely. They would talk to us very nicely, things like that, you know? And we wanted to be liked by these people. And many of us, well, I guess, like, again, I can only speak for myself, but I've heard other people say it too. Many of us were people that weren't liked by people in much of our lives, you know? Or w weren't, you know, popular groups, crowds. And so, um, it, to have somebody on such a huge level like that, and, and yes, this is phony, superficial bullshit, but it, it's my truth, and it's what happened with me. Um, no matter what was going on, for somebody out there to be like, oh, well, Peter said this in a video, and I like that, or hey, like, you know, like, I left a comment on your video, you know, like, that meant a lot to me, right? Today, I look back on that, and I realize um, that it was just such utter bullshit. And in all honesty, um, and I'll probably contradict myself somewhere in this video, but I don't blame the, the influencer for that. Like, I don't blame the Shane Dawson's or the Jeffree Stars for manipulating me. Um, I think they did what they had to do at that time to protect their careers, protect their businesses, to try to control the narrative. They, I wasn't the only one they were doing it to. They were doing it to many, many people. Um... I blame myself. I take full responsibility as a grown adult that I should have known better. And um, I, I think that one thing that people probably, you know, here I am sitting here talking about and talking to all these people, but one thing that I figured out very, very quickly because, you know, I entered this, if I'm 51 now, I entered this at what, 46, 47? 
one of the things I realized very quickly was when somebody's like, oh, hey, like, I really like you, and blah, 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 whatever, I'm like, oh, hey, yeah, and whatever they're saying to you, they're saying behind your back to somebody else, right? Like, I mean, that was lived experience that I have lived for 46, 45 years of my life already that far, you know? So, you know, I'm dealing with people that are much younger than me, you know, 30 years old or whatnot, that are trying to kind of, like, shine me on a little bit, and at first I was taken by the the pop culture celebrity of the these YouTubers that are on a huge level. But after, you know, very quickly interacting with them, what I realized was that for me to um, kind of be able to continue to get information or do what I wanted to do, that I had to speak to them the same way that they were speaking to me. So I don't want for one second for anybody to think that they were like getting one over on me or whatever. Um, I'm going to read some conversations to you. And, and very much in these conversations, it's like, um, yeah, like, hey, like, I totally didn't know. And I'm like, yeah, like, hey, don't worry about it. It's totally okay. And that was very gamey on my part. It re I totally take ownership over that, right? Um, and, uh, but that was also part of me sitting back and being like, yeah, like, I really see who you, who you truly are. Like, I see your true colors, 100%. Um, and I think that you know, from going back and, and listen, I'm going to talk about Shane Dawson and this whole Amelia Fart thing today. People are like, well, Peter just won't let this go. He's brought it up over and over. I don't, I, I probably maybe brought it up. Maybe I, I think I said in that video, I don't think I've ever brought this up before. I don't remember ever specifically talking about it in a video before. I may have mentioned it here and there. Um, but I don't remember talking about it over and over and over again. The Amelia Fart thing. If I have, I am very repetitive with my story. So I, I don't remember telling it over and over and over again, but I might have. The reason that I brought the whole story up was not because I haven't moved on from the situation. If you don't know what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about is a situation where I was in LA to do a video with uh, Amelia Fart. And a lot of people have asked where Amelia Fart is today. Amelia is still very active on Instagram and um, has a Patreon and things like that. Um, I believe that she has left doing YouTube videos and actually made a video saying that she was leaving YouTube. So she and I had gotten very friendly and I just loved her vibe and her style and everything that her, her, her spirit spoke of and still do. And, um, and so, um, and I don't follow her that closely today in all honesty, but she, I had gone to LA once and, um, she was not there when I was there originally. And so I came back out, um, to, uh, when I got back home, she called me and she said, do you want to come back out to LA? I'm going to be in LA. And I said, yeah. So I turned around like a month later and I came back out specifically to do a video with her. And when I was out there, um, I had reached out to Trisha Paytas. Now this is important. Okay. This was in February of 2019. In August of 2018, I met Shane Dawson, Rylan Adams, Andrew, um, Garrett, it was just the four of them, yeah. And um, at the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas on the 26th of August, 2018. That was when I was there for my anniversary. Um, the way that that meeting came around, in all honesty, was that he was tweeting that he was in Las Vegas. I was tweeting that I was in Las Vegas. A lot of people were like, you guys should meet up. So he, I believe, reached out to me and said, um, hey, like, do you want to meet up, blah, 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 whatever. I was like, yeah, that'd be really, really nice. I was very enamored with Shane Dawson at that time. Um, we met up. We had a very interesting conversation. It was a very nice conversation. I made a whole video about it. I was like, I can't believe I met him. He was so nice. They were, all, they were, they were very nice to me at that time. Um, I later, people often ask me, like, why has your tune changed with Shane Dawson? I mean, I think that's an interesting question. It's like, do you not have people that you interact with in your work world or in your personal life that your opinion changes from one month to the next? You know, my, my best friend says to me all the time, like, my opinion can change, you know, from one minute to the next about somebody. Um, you know, I found out that while I was meeting with him, he had just recently had a conversation. I found this out a long time after that, but he had had a conversation with somebody talking about me negatively. I have the voice note saved on my phone that they gave to me, this other person, um, where he's just literally trashing me left and right. And, um, and some people want to know like why I'm not coming out with all this at the same time. Like I'm not stupid. I'm saving this stuff. Right. Like I've lived on this light. I've lived on this earth long enough to know that there will be a time and a place to bring all this out. Um, and I have a lot. So that that voice note will 
come out sometime later. I used to say I probably would never play it. I think it'll probably come out at some point. And I'm not just like teasing that. It's just like right now is not the right time. I don't really have a point to prove with all that. It's just is that he was talking shit behind my back. He was very upset about, well, really what he was trying to do was he was trying to get on this person's good side. And so he was telling them horrible shit about me because he knew that this person and I had a falling out. Okay, which we then made, we later made up. And so he was talking shit about me to this person that he knew that, this is what Shane Dawson does, okay? Shane Dawson is very calculated and manipulated behind the scenes. So he said all this kind of stuff. One of the things he said in there was, this is why I kind of hinted at my video because I know that Shane Dawson watches every single video that's made about him. Shane Dawson reads everything that's online about him, even though he says he doesn't want to read about, he, he is obsessed and consumed with the drama, okay? As is Trisha Paytas, as are all these people, uh, Jaclyn Hill, Jeffree Star, they read and watch everything everything that is made about them, okay? Just so y'all know. They, everybody's like, they got teams, they, no. They watch every fucking video. They know what is said. They know what's written about them on the Reddit threads. Trust me, I've had conversations with all of them about this, okay? They can't help them. So when I say something in a video, like about uh, Shane Dawson being very upset with me because of a review that I gave Joy Graceffa's book, I'm saying that so that he knows I'm referencing that voice note to that person. So he knows what the fuck I'm talking about, okay? So anyway, so I had gone out there to do this video with Amelia Fart. Amelia Fart was obsessed with Trisha Paytas. So Trisha and I were very friendly at that time. So I had said to Trisha something about like possibly getting together, whatever. She'd said, if you're ever out here, give me a call, okay? So I thought it would be really fun to get the two of them together and surprise Amelia with Trisha Paytas, okay? And uh, Trisha and I had like a brief conversation on the phone at that point about that. I don't remember how that conversation went, but we had like some brief exchange about that. What happened was, okay, so I was very excited about like, I thought this would be, and people are like, why is Peter so upset that Shane stole his moment? I could give a rat's ass, okay? I really could. I'm just explaining to you the kind of person that Shane Dawson is. It's not like I'm like so bent out of shape because Shane Dawson stole my moment. It's not like people like, eat. listen, it's not about that, okay? I've, I've, had, I've had better moments in my life, trust me, okay? You know, watching my, you know, my nephew battle it out with some little girl at the wedding and a dance battle was a moment, okay? Uh, me giving Amelia Fart a moment with Trisha Paytas is not a moment in my life, all right? I could give a fuck about that in all honesty, right? Like, let's just keep it real. Okay, I, I don't know about all of them, but I'm a real person living on my front porch in Indianapolis, Indiana with my husband and my dog, okay? You know, seeing my, seeing my mother-in-law come down the stairs in a dress that she had picked out and her hair up and looking the most beautiful that she had looked than I had seen her in a long time. And my mother-in-law is beautiful to begin with. And how proud she was of seeing her youngest son get married, that was a fucking moment, okay? Introducing Trisha Paytas to Amelia Fart was not a moment, all right? So people that want to say like, oh, sh Peter's so upset that Shane, I could give a fuck about that. I was using it as an example to prove to you who Shane Dawson is. It's the people that want to defend Shane Dawson that don't want to see who he is as a person, okay? So anyway, so we were out there. Well, Trisha said something to me to the effect of that that day wouldn't work, okay? I'm going to read this to you in a second. That the day that she was going to come over because Amelia and I were filming, she knew that, that that day wouldn't work, that she had other things. Because Shane had reached out to her to do a video, okay? I found, I put these pieces together later, all right? Because when I'm sitting there with Amelia, I had said something to Amelia about doing something later. We ended up going out to eat. We were going to do something later. And she said, well, Shane invited me over to his house. And she said, I asked him if he cared that if you came. And he said he just wanted to kind of keep it us, right? Okay. So I had been texting Shane at the same time, too. Now, people want to say that Amelia and Shane were friendly. They had never met before period, end of story, okay? I have proof of that in text messages. So people that are saying that Peter's lying, Peter's making all this kind of bullshit up, okay? I'm not a fucking liar. I am tired of being called a fucking liar, and if I have to read every fucking text message that's in my phone to prove that wrong, I will, okay? If I have to put these people on full blast to show what shitty ass people they are and read every fucking text message, I will. I am so far past caring at this point, just let me tell you, okay? You guys want to defend these people, and for years I've just said, oh, this person's not a good person, just trust me. And you guys are like, oh, you don't have anything, trust me. I have phone calls and text messages to back this shit up, okay? They, they, this is the thing that YouTubers do, okay? They don't ever send you a text message usually. They usually send you a voice text, because that way they can see when you've listened to it and if you keep it or not, okay? 
I have a few saved voice notes. Not a lot, but I have a few. But that's how they do it, okay? It's that all these big influencers, they usually don't text you. They usually send you, like Jeffree Star is killing for this. Jeffree Star doesn't ever really text, except for like emojis. Like the skull emoji, whenever we talked about James Charles, Laura Lee, Manny MUA, it was always a skull emoji that he'd send me, okay? That was his favorite emoji to send to me about them, all right? But it was always voice notes, voice notes, voice notes. Well, I accidentally kept a few of them and I didn't know that. And I don't think Jeffree Star knows that I have them either, okay? And they're very um, incriminating voice notes. So, trust me, not about him using certain language because if I have those voice notes and he never used that language talking to me on the phone, ever, because if, if he did, I would have already talked about that. But anyway, so... <clears throat> Shane Dawson, at the same time, knew that Amelia, that I was, because apparently, I don't know, Trisha had said something to Shane about, well, Peter's going to arrange this, like, meeting with me and Amelia and whatever. So Shane arranges for Trisha to come to his house, and then um, he's going to do this whole video with Amelia Fart. I hadn't even really planned on filming anything with Trisha and Amelia. I just wanted... I just wanted Amelia to meet Trisha. I thought that was kind of a big ask to ask Trisha, like, do you care if we sit down? Now, I did not include this in my video the other day, but I want to explain this because, you know, in my years of coming for Trisha and saying nasty things about her that are based on her own, her own life story, her own truths of things that she's done people want to say are nasty, okay, or me giving her a free pass, as people say, well, okay, it doesn't matter. Whether I am supporting her or whether I, I am, like, holding her accountable, people aren't happy about it. But I will say in this moment, Trisha knew, I think, that, like, I was kind of, like confused about the whole situation. So she turned around and she took time out of her day to set up for me to come over to her house the very next day and film. Because I think she felt bad about the whole situation that I wasn't included in this Amelia, Shane, Trisha situation. So Trisha went out of her way to have me come over to her apartment, okay? And that was where I sat down on her kitchen floor and I filmed that video and things like that. Trisha, Trisha went out of her way to make sure that that happened because I think she knew, like, Peter's not included in this. I'm not going to tell Shane no, things like that. Like, a lot of people were putting this on Shane and this Reddit or on Trisha and saying that Trisha knew and Trisha that. I think Trisha didn't know what to do in that situation. I'm not, like, defending her honor because, like, there's a lot that Trisha has done that I think she needs to take accountability for. But in this moment... I was really like, she never had to film with me. She had never had to say anything to me, right? She could say, yeah, well, I'm filming with Amelia and Shane. Go get fucked, right? But she didn't. She was like, hey, but, like, listen, I'm really busy t tomorrow, but, like, let me see if I can fit you in. And I was flying out the next day, and she fit me in. She was very gracious. So I just want to paint that picture because I think it's only fair if I'm going to call people out for things they need to take accountability for to also show the moments where they're very kind and gracious as well. And that was one of the moments that I think that Trisha was trying to do the right thing. I really do believe that. Um, and like I said, when I met Trisha, when I filmed with Trisha, she was only kind and gracious to me. She was not somebody that talked about the drama. We sat in her living room. She told me about her life. I told her a little bit about my life. She asked me where I wanted to film. I said, can we film the kitchen floor? She was like, yeah, absolutely. We filmed the kitchen floor. She was very nice. She was very gracious. Um, and you know, and it is what it is. And I know a lot of people have issues with her. I have issues with her as well, but that was not one of the moments that I take issue with. I think that in being fair and objective to any story or to any situation, it's important to show the truth about all the situations. Just like I think it was very kind for Shane Dawson to meet me in Las Vegas. Like he didn't have to do that. I don't know if he felt pressured, but whether he did or not, um, it was very nice for him to meet me. I mean, they all got fans. They flipped fans. It was, you know, it was nice for me. You know, it was a cool moment and, um, whatever it would have probably meant a little bit more to me if I didn't find out that he had just been talking a week before me, some shit behind my back, but, you know, it is what it is. It was nice. We had a, you know, a nice conversation and whatever. Interestingly enough, um, this is going to stop in just a second. Hold on. Okay. Interestingly enough, when I was reading back through my text messages, which honestly I haven't read in years, um, he said something about the reason that he didn't invite me over to his house was because the last time that he saw me, the only time I've ever seen him was in Las Vegas. That's the only time I've ever seen the man in person. The last time he saw me, he knew that there was some shit between Trisha Paytas and I. Okay. Well, that's a lie. And I don't even know why I didn't pick up on it at the time, but I think I kind of did, honestly. I think I kind of, like, remembering back, I'm kind of like, well, that's weird that he says that. Because Trisha actually texted me the very next day, and I looked through my text messages, and I do have them. When I was in, she said, oh, my God, you and Shane are in Vegas together. And I said, yeah. And, I, cause I, and she said, if I had known that, 
I don't know she said that to me that day and she said if I had known that I would have flown out there and meet, met you guys which was where I said that to him and he said Trisha Paytas is a, he goes well Trisha is a pathological liar Shane Dawson said so much horrific shit about pa Trisha Paytas Tana Mojo Jake Paul everybody that day right he really said a lot of nasty shit about Trisha Paytas. So for him then to insinuate that the reason that he didn't invite me over to his house for this Amelia fart video was because things were awkward between Trisha Paytas and I was so bizarre. No, what it was was he didn't want me in the same room with him and Trisha Paytas because he was afraid that I might say, well, didn't you say that Trisha Paytas was a pathological liar? Because this is one of the things, okay? is that a lot of these influencers have always been worried that I will come out with the truth, okay? And I have, and they've said that to me before. Well, I know you're not somebody that's scared to come out and tell it. Well, I'm not scared to come out and tell it anymore. For a long time, I was. And a long time, this was the thing, right? Like when I came out and I said that Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star's um, collab palette was a cash grab, I got so decimated about that. Now, if y'all want to know another story, okay, because people say, oh, I'm so bitter I didn't get that collab. If you guys want me to read you the text messages between Shane Dawson and, and me where he basically forced that collab on me and said he was sending it to me and I said I was going to give it to you. He, I said, I don't want it. Don't send it to me. He goes, oh, no, it's already sent. I already FedExed it to you tonight because I was so upset you weren't on the list. Well, why wasn't I on the list if you said I was originally on the list? He sent me this receipt of how I was on the list and all this kind of stuff trying to prove to me because he was so pissed that I came out in a video and said something about it and then everybody came for me. So he was pissed that I came out in a video and said I didn't get it. Everybody said I was bitter about getting the collab. I didn't want that fucking collab, okay? I tried to get online for five hours and buy that to give to somebody that was a super fan that I was going to do. A super fan of theirs, not mine, that I was going to do a video with, okay? That was just a mom here in Indiana that she and I drove around and did videos for a couple hours. And I and when he sent me the whole thing, I said, you can send it to me, but I don't want it, and I'm gonna give the whole thing to her because she, she loves you guys, and I did. And I showed that all in video. So if you wanna see that whole exchange about how, like, oh no, I wanted to give this to you and I wanted you to open it and it meant so much to me and all this kind of bullshit about that kind of stuff. He was so pissed that I called that out for being a cash grab. You want to see how this man really is behind the scenes? I got all those fucking text messages too, okay? So anyway, that's what happened in the whole situation with LA. Now, I brought this up in a video the other day because I was trying to kind of show who Shane Dawson is as a person, okay? I also brought up the fact that Shane Dawson that I had given him this idea about doing a video, a documentary on stalkers and Christina, Christina Grimmie and things like that, right? Because I knew that, and I've said this many times in videos, that James Charles had an entire idea for a 10-part series um, that was about the beginning of the Morphe palette and, and that the last video was going to be the release of the Morphe palette, okay? And through there, he was going to talk about drama channels and all this kind of stuff, and myself, and here for the tea, we're going to be involved in that, and all this kind of stuff. Shane Dawson became an integral part of that documentary series because he wanted to get everybody in a room, okay? Toddy Westbrook, Manny MUA, Jeffree Star, this is when they were all on good terms, right? He wanted to get them all in a room and have them question she and I together. Well, she wasn't down with all that, okay? So that was kind of how the whole thing fell apart. And then James Charles at the last minute was like, oh, NDAs need to be signed and all this kind of bullshit. And she's like freaking out. She's like, no, I'm not doing this. She's like, it's no. She's like, I can already see where this is going. And so the whole thing got canceled at the last minute because... Shane Dawson told James Charles, I don't think this documentary is a good idea for you. And then Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson turned around and literally did the exact same documentary. And I'm not saying that James Charles doesn't deserve that because I think James Charles is a piece of shit. But no matter what, okay, people want to sing the, the creative praises of Shane Dawson when everything that Shane Dawson does is somebody else's idea. Period. End of story. Okay. So, somebody sent me this Reddit thread. And I just happened to, I, I don't read everything that people send me, but I was just looking through it. And it's on the Shane Dawson Reddit. And it says, Peter Mon alleges that Shane stole an idea from him to surprise Amelia Fart. And the whole thing goes on to explain it. And then people are like, what happened to Amelia Fart? And all this kind of stuff. And then they're explaining that she posts on TikTok. She's got a Patreon and all this kind of stuff. And then somebody said, I hope he tells us the 20 stories about Shane's in the video. I said, like, I've got 20, 40 stories about Shane Dawson. It's amazing that we think we finally have the complete picture of what a terrible person Shane is. And then more stories come out. And it's like, how can it get any worse? And then it gets worse. Here's the thing with Shane's stories, okay? Shane's stories, I don't think, like, if any of them I told you, you'd be like, oh, my God, that like, that's so shocking. Like, I was kind of surprised because a lot of people, and I even got, I even got texted by several, like, bigger YouTubers that watch my videos and were like, I'm really surprised and I'm sorry that Shane did that to you. And I'm like, I didn't even really think it was that big of a deal. I just use it as an example 
to prove. Like, let's me be very clear about this, okay? I have fully moved on from this situation. Moved on it after that weekend, could care less. People are like, you bring this up. I'm a drama fucking commentary channel, okay? This is what I do as I talk about these people. This is proof and evidence to who they are as people, right? It's not me not like sitting here going, oh my God, I can't believe that Shane Dawson stole that idea. It's not about all that, okay? You know, it's about explaining who he is as a person. And I was kind of surprised that so many people responded the way they did and were like, oh my God, I can't believe that he did this to you. That's the thing. Like any of these stories that I told you about Shane Dawson wouldn't, I don't think they're anything that you'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe he did that. Like they're not like career ruining things. It just paints a very clear picture of who Shane Dawson is. And Shane Dawson has his hand in everything, number one, okay? Number two, because when I tell you, like, oh, Shane, this person reached out to me about Shane, that person reached out to me about, and you're like, well, all these people are from different communities. How does Shane have all of these same people in all his different communities that he's manipulating, right? Oh, and he talks to them all the same way, and the way that he talks to you is the same way that he talked to this other drama commentary channel, and then the same way they talk to this, I mean, it's, it's mystifying, okay? No wonder the man is so stressed out because he's, it's, it's like, you know, when you tell a lie to your parents or your parents and your teacher and you don't want them in the room at the same time because you're so afraid that they're gonna tell, they're gonna figure it out, like as a little kid, like that's Shane Dawson. Like he doesn't want these people in the room together because then they're gonna get their stories together and they're gonna be like, oh, well, Shane Dawson's a liar, right? Okay. So it goes on and all these people are like, you know, pretty positive about the whole thing. Somebody said, I remember when this happened, what a crappy thing to do. And someone said, stealing, uh, Shane stealing Trisha's meetup is so sneaky. But then it kind of turns a little bit, okay? And somebody said, Peter's been telling this story about Amelia Fart for the past three years. I'm surprised he's still salty over it. I'm not salty over it, but if I've been telling it for the last three years, I really honestly don't remember, but maybe I have, I guess. Somebody said, I don't think it's his, as much him being salty as it is him explaining why he dislikes Shane. It's not even about me disliking Shane, because I, to be honest with you, and I know people don't believe this, it's really about, I, I really have no, you know, like they say the opposite of um, love and hate is, um, what's, shoot, now I can't think, think of the word, people are shouting it, but I, I have no emotional attachment to the man whatsoever. I, you know, when I first started on YouTube, the reality is I did kind of see these people as superstars. I, I do, do not fool myself into ever thinking that I had any kind of real relationship with these people. We spoke a couple times, well, more than a couple times in text messages and phone calls and things like that with a lot of these different people. I don't think I was ever their friend. I don't think I ever had friendships with them. Um, oh, the, the opposite of love and hate is indifference. I feel completely indifferent to it. I feel probably for the first time, and this is so liberating to me, that in my career on YouTube that I can talk about these people and, and really talk about it from the outside looking in. Um, I think if I were who I am today, these people would never have had relationships with me because I think that who I am today would never have um, allowed himself to be manipulated. I allowed myself to be manipulated. And I put that on me. That's my responsibility. I don't put that on anybody else. I was a grown ass man, okay? That was being shined on by these people. You know, part of it was because I wanted some information. Part of it was, but it was information that I was never going to use until today. So anyway, um, somebody said, I, I understand wanting to share his side of the story, but he's told the story at least six or seven times before. Six and seven times over seven years. So what's that? One time a year. <laughs> at a certain point, he should move on because it comes off very childish. He's 51 year old man. Well, thank you for getting my age right. Because people usually age me up. Um... And I would admit to that, that like, if it is me telling it because I can't get over it, then I do agree that that's completely childish. Um, but that's really, to be honest with you, that's not, and, I, and you're going to believe what you want to believe, but that's not really what it's about. It's really about me just kind of explaining. Um, like somebody said, he stole my opportunity to let someone meet Trisha Paytas. Sir, you're like 50. Is this really something you care about? No. What I care about is people understanding the character of Shane Dawson. That's what I care about, is that people really understand. Um, this person says in here, he talks about, this This is right here, the, the, the language and the speak of one of my, dear, my biggest haters, okay? This is the kind of shit that they say because they know that this drives me crazy. He talks about forgiveness and moving on in his Peterisms channel, but doesn't apply his spiritual messages and beliefs to his own life, which seems hypocritical. I used to follow his channels, but unsubscribe because of his constant anger, bickering, and negativity. He used to be so funny and entertaining, but his demeanor has changed to being grumpy, cursing, and bullying. So I don't think that this video right here comes across as grumpy, cursing, and bullying. 
Um, and I don't feel like I'm angry, bickering, or negative in this video. I'm just sharing some truths. But I appreciate your opinion about that. Forgiveness for me, and I love the definition by Oprah, is accepting that what happened in the past happened and now asking yourself what are you going to do about it so that you don't get held hostage to the past, okay? Um, I do not feel like Shane Dawson did anything to me that I really need to forgive him for. Um, Shane Dawson is somebody that I had a work relationship with on YouTube, okay? I'm not Daniel Prado with Colleen Ballinger. I wouldn't even ever have considered us close friends. We met. I met the man one time and text messaged him maybe like 20 times. I never considered the man a close friend person to me. I don't have the desire or the need to forgive him. If he feels like I need to forgive him, Shane Dawson, you're completely forgiven. Okay? What am I doing to it to not be held hostage to the past? Well, I did that a long time ago by letting go. Okay? As a drama commentary channel, do I think it's important as Shane Dawson continues to try to repair his character and people continue to see through it and I witness that he hasn't changed for me to share with people what his true character is like? That really has nothing to do with forgiveness or my personal belief systems. That has to do with my my job as a drama commentary channel and if you don't really understand the difference of that then I totally understand why you needed to unsubscribe to me and I think that, that was probably a good choice um, and, and I you know if, if you find my videos to be angry negative bickering and childish um, <laughs> Baby, they ain't changing so I don't know what to tell you okay go find some cat smiling videos or something like that um, and then it goes on, and then somebody says, he has been talking about this forever. No one even really knows who Amelia is anymore. Well, that's not true. She still has quite a following, but I don't remember the last time I talked about this anymore, honestly. And then somebody said, I remember Amelia being at Shane's house during a video of Morgan made. Now, this is where people are talking about, like, um when em Amelia and Shane have been friends. And this person says, Amelia and Shane have been friends for a while. Peter is lying again, Okay. This is why I'm making this video tonight, right here. You're the reason, right here, that I'm making this uh, this video, okay? Um, somebody said, I mean all this he said, she said type of drama. Frankly, there's so much already out there. How about, sh uh, well, I mean, there is, but like, <laughs> I mean, isn't all drama commentary kind of he said, she said bullshit? Like, I mean, let's just, let's just be for real, right? Like, isn't that what it all is? I mean... I've never fooled myself with that, have you? Like, I've never really taken myself that seriously. That's why I say I'm a candle review company. I, I don't take myself that seriously, okay? I know that some people do, but anyway. Peter Mon needs to grow up, dear God. Oh my God, I do, though. Okay, and then somebody said, Shane has been friends with Amelia. She has been in at least one video of Morgan's, too. And then somebody said, okay, and? And then somebody said, Peter Mon is shady as fuck, and I wouldn't trust half of what he gossips about. So the lying and the saying that I gossip about things that are not true is really the reason why I'm going to start standing up and telling myself. Even if I have to read DMs, and listen, for a long time, there has always been kind of this... Um, this go-to of, like, we shouldn't read DMs, we shouldn't read, you know, text messages and things like that. There are certain things, and I will be editing certain things out here, okay? There are certain things that I would never betray somebody's trust with, all right? There are things that people have told me. There are things that Shane Dawson has told me. There are things Jeffree Star has told me. There are things Trisha Paytas has told me that I would never betray their trust, okay? Whether they're true or whether they're false. And I believe many of them to be false, okay? To emotionally manipulate me to think a certain way about things. But no matter what, I would never share those things. I'm only gonna share facts to the contrary. So when people wanna come out and say Peter did this, no, 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 no. The reason I'm doing this is because people wanna call me out for being a liar and a gossip. So let's get into these text messages, shall we? So I went back in here because I was like, well, maybe I miss, I'm, I'm forgetting what this, what all happened. So I went in here and I looked at my text messages. First of all, I wanna show you guys some pictures, okay? So this is from February 27th or 26th of 2019. I don't know if you can see it. People are like, turn down your brightness. Okay, let me go in here and see if I turn down my brightness people are always like if you turn down your brightness I don't even know how to do it you'll be able to show your pictures okay <sighs> oh wait wait here it is display and brightness okay brightness so if I go in here now I can show my pictures okay let's see should we see if this will work I doubt it will but if it does then you are fucking geniuses all of you okay so this is from February 26th of 2019 Oh, it does work! Oh my god, you're such geniuses. Okay, so that is Amelia Fart and I. And that is from February 26th of 2019. Then this is from the next day, February 27th of 2019. And that is me and Trisha Paytas. Okay? 
And then this is from August 26th of 2018, and this is me and Shane Dawson meeting at the Cosmopolitan Las Vegas, okay? Six months prior to that. So I just want to make the, the timing of that. For when people say um, of how this all timing went, I want to make sure that I'm very, very clear about that. Now, because I'm old, I need to put the brightness back up on my phone or I'm not going to be able to read these text messages. Okay, so let's get into this a little bit. So... Um, and no, I didn't ask anybody about permission of reading these text messages. These are my fucking text messages, and I'll read them if I choose to read them. Okay. So, Trisha texted me, and this was on the 26th of 2019 at 9.45 a.m. Hey, babe, text me about today. I don't want to intrude on what you and Amelia are shooting, but maybe I'll come over. What time do you think you'll wrap up and surprise her? And we can film, too. Now, I had never asked Trisha if she wanted to film before, okay? I responded to her at 2.01 p.m. Oh, my God, are you kidding? I die. I know you're going through a tough time right now, so I don't want to bother you. Whatever is best... I'm heading over there at 1, okay? Um, which I don't know why that came up at 2 at 1 p.m., but it did. And then, and then I said, we're going to finish up here in a bit, so let me know if you're still interested. Oh, because this is at like 6 o'clock, 6.17. If you're still interested. If not, I'm free the rest of the day. Um, just let me know. Hope you're well, okay? Then she texted me back, and she said, hey, love, today is getting away from me. What time do you leave tomorrow? I'll be done with hair and makeup around 10 a.m. You're more than welcome to come to my house, or we can get breakfast or lunch or whatever, or all the above. Um, I might still be able to make today work, but I look a hot mess. LOL, tomorrow I'll be a Trish Trish, LOL. And then she talked about where she lived and things like that, okay? And um, I said, okay. And then she said, she told me what time to come the next day and all that kind of stuff because she said that that day would not work for her. Okay. So then I cross reference these with Shane Dawson's text messages. So this was at 2.25 the same day. Okay. I said, because um, this was when, when um, Amelia told me that she was going over to meet with Shane Dawson. Okay. So I was like, mm, I think I'm going to be a little shady here and I'm going to try to get in and see, and see what he, if he's going to be honest with me about these plans. Okay, since Trisha must have told him, okay, that because what happened in between here, the text message you're not seeing is that Shane reached out to Amelia, okay, and was like, hey, like, why don't you come over to my house, blah, 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 whatever. That was why Trisha said she was going to come over, and then at the last minute she said the day was getting away with her, okay, because she was going over to Shane's house that night. So when I put two and two together, I was like, oh, well, let me reach out to Shane and see what Shane has to say about all this, right? So I said, hey, Shane, I know it's a kind of last minute and you're busy. This is while I'm filming. I'm sitting across from Amelia in her Airbnb while she's doing her makeup and she's telling me about getting ready to go film with Shane Dawson, okay? I said, and you're busy filming, but I'm in town and I'll be here till tomorrow. So if you're around and free, have a minute to meet up, let me know, no obligations. He said, hey, what time do you leave tomorrow? We are filming all day, but I'm not sure what time will we be done. And I said, LOL, it's cool. I'm meeting up with Trisha and flying out tomorrow. Um, and then, oh, this was right after we were having dinner. And I said, because I put her in the Uber, which is what I said the other day in the video, and people want to call me a liar. I said, LOL, it's cool. I'm meeting up with Trisha and flying out tomorrow. I'm sending Amelia to you in her Uber right now. LOL. We filmed today. Treat my girl right. I love her. LOL. Maybe next time. Thanks for getting back, though I appreciate it. Now, for all the people out there that want to say that Shane Dawson and Amelia Fart had a relationship prior to me and that this was not him or whatever, he said, oh my God, I'm so nervous. I love her so much. I hope she likes me. Is that how you talk about somebody that you've met a million times before? That you hope that they like you? Well, if he's already met her, then wouldn't he know if she liked him or not? Um, and okay, good. To be honest, I was going to surprise Amelia tonight with Trish, so I've been trying to coordinate that, and I wasn't sure if you and Trish... This is our after I already knew that he was, she was going out there, okay? I already, and, and I already knew what was going on, all right? So he knows I know, so this is how he shines me on, right? Oh, to be, and I already said, I've sent her on the, in the Uber on the way to you. I was going to surprise Amelia tonight with Trish, so I've been trying to coordinate that, and I wasn't sure if you and Trish were on good terms or not. I feel like last time I saw you, something was weird with you guys. Last time I saw you, I've seen him one time in my entire life, and that was in August when he was talking mad shit about Trish Paytas calling her a pathological liar. Or maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Yeah, you're remembering it wrong because you were talking mad shit about Trish Paytas, Shane Dawson, just like you talk mad shit about everybody else. Like you talked about Jeffree Star to Gabby Hanna and said that he still uses the same racist language, okay? But now you don't want to admit to that. Just like you talked about Jake Paul to me, just like you talked about Tana Mojo to me, just like you talked about a lot of people, okay? Just like you talked about me to other people, all right? 
Let's not get it twisted, Shane Dawson. You are the common denominator talking shit to everybody, all right? I don't know, haha. Ha. Always some drama that I'm always late on. No, you're usually right in the middle of it, Shannon. I think you know that. I would have had you come tonight, but I just didn't want to make it awkward for you guys. But I guess I was wrong. Ha ha. I totally understand, Shane. Don't even worry about it. She's so excited about meeting you, and I already got to, so I just wanted her to have fun. I kind of wondered if you were surprising her with Trisha. Because I already knew, because I put two and two together. I figured you were. I love Trisha at that... Uh, wait. Um... Something about, I texted Trisha at that time. I thought she was, ups oh, wait, wait, wait. She texted me later that night, so I guess it's all good. Amelia is fantastic. I had so much fun hanging with her today. You'll love her even more in person. He has not met her in person, see? Oh, okay, good. I'm glad you guys are okay, me and Trisha and I, right? I should have just asked her, huh? I was just trying to avoid awkward stuff. Hope you guys have fun tomorrow. I'm glad you guys are good. Um, I said, yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, I always feel like I'm harassing people so I never know if I'm being overboard for contacting them. Thanks for understanding Having have fun tonight. Um, and then he said, stop it. We love you. Andrew said beast seven times today. Ha ha, just in conversation, we forever stand. This is the manipulation that goes on behind the scenes, okay? Between these people. I would love to know what Shane Dawson has said to, to Andrew about all this kind of shit. But I will tell you this, what I do know. Now, I will tell you this, Shane Dawson never asked me when I met him or any other time to ever s to sign an NDA. But I know for a fact that he has had other people or ask other people who declined to sign NDAs that say that they are good forever. Okay, not just till the end of a project, not just till the end of a video, but they are good forever. So what is Shane Dawson so worried about? Now, if I can read a few text messages, okay, that show that he was just trying to put some video together and have his moment with, really what it was was that he just wanted to have his moment alone being the one, because if you go watch the video, okay, what it is is he's so excited to surprise Amelia Fart with Trisha Paytas. Trisha had already probably told him, well, I'm going over to Amelia's because Peter's going to surprise me with, well, we should do it at my house tonight. Let me arrange the whole thing, okay? Well, what about Peter? Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. That's the whole, how the whole thing went down. The man does not have an original idea, okay? People want to act like I'm bitter about it. Listen, like y'all said, where, where's Amelia Fart? She's doing her own thing. I haven't talked to her in years, okay? I don't talk to Trisha Paytas. I don't talk to Shane Dawson. Trust me, I ain't ended up with it anymore. But I want y'all to know... What kind of person this is. And this is like the least of it. This is like the least of his shadiness of how he keeps everybody going and talking about everybody. You know? This is the least of it. Y'all have no idea. You have no idea how thirsty this man is. The fact that this man... I can remember being in a beach. Okay, being on a beach in Miami Beach. People want to talk about me being ate up with this stuff and being thirsty. Okay, or other drama channels. I can remember being on a beach in Florida and this man started texting me, asking me, okay, about all different kind of drama channels. And I'm like, I am on a beach with my husband, okay, enjoying a vacation in Miami, all right? Now, I don't know why you're so consumed with it, okay? That Trisha Paytas told me back in the day that he knew everybody's numbers, he knew what their subscriber counts were, he knew who was up and coming, things like that. Why do you think he's got his TV tuned to that social blade 24 hours a day? He knows whose people's numbers are. The second after, the very first message that he ever DM'd me was about once I was getting a million video views a month, he said, I hope that you're monetizing your channel because you can be making money off of that. I had never really ever interacted with Shane Dawson before. But you guys sit here and think that we just pulled this shit out of our ass. Oh, these people aren't good people. No. But I'm going to stand up for myself. People are going to call me liars and gossipers and say that didn't true. And Shane knew Amelia. Shane didn't know fucking Amelia before that. Shane didn't even know Amelia Fart was in Los Angeles, okay? Until I was doing the video. He didn't even know about that. Until Trisha said to him on the phone probably, oh, I'm going over to film, to, to Peter's going to arrange this meeting with me and Amelia Fart. He knew Amelia Fart was his up and coming thing because you have to remember at that time, Shane Dawson has always done videos with people that are up and coming, okay? To cross pollinate his audience to get big and huge, okay? When he saw what Jeffree Star was doing to drama commentary channels, that's why he got friendly with all the drama commentary channels because he thought they could boost them up as well. Amelia Fart, at the time, every video she was doing was getting a shit ton of views. All right? So, 
oh, this is a perfect time for him to get this person that she's going to be the next big thing on YouTube, and I'm going to introduce her to Trisha Pace. We're going to do this video together. That's what it was about to Shane Dawson. That's who he is as a person. He only cares about the views. He only cares about the money. He doesn't care about the moment. So don't tell me I'm better, okay? Y'all need to be turning that camera towards Shane Dawson because Shane Dawson is the one. He's the one that's better, not me, okay? Listen, I got things to do, like go up and watch... Uh, I think I'm, I think I need to probably read into some more of these text messages a little bit more and see what I got, don't you think? <laughs> Y'all think I don't know, right? <laughs> like, I don't think I, I don't know what all them text messages say from years ago. I got a memory of steel. That's why when people say that I'm lying about shit, I'm like, okay. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that's about it. We had such a good time in San Diego, but I kind of miss being on my front porch. It's kind of be, it's kind of nice being back in my, was that too angry? Was that too too negative and too childish? I did feel myself getting a little heated there for a moment. Did I though? Was it too, was I cussing too much? Oh fuck it. Anyway, I love you guys so much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.